Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I will be comparing artificial tanks to live tanks. Now technically this can go for any amphibian or reptile you're keeping and you're thinking of using a live tank but for this video I will be using my crested geckos as an example. So I've split this into five sections and the first one is the overall look. So the overall look of a tank I think is very subjective. It's up to you what you prefer. Maybe you prefer artificial tanks, maybe you prefer live tanks. For me personally Personally, I do prefer live tanks and looking back at my old tanks, I 100% prefer the live tanks. Now there are some downfalls to live tanks that we'll get into in a bit, one being that they aren't always successful. So right now, Isla's tank isn't looking that great, a lot of the plants are dying, I don't know why, so you know that doesn't look ideal to me. But I definitely feel like because of the amount of variation you get with actual live plants and the fact they're always growing and always changing, it just makes it more interesting to look at than sort of a generic plastic plant. But once again, that's totally up to you how you feel about a tank. The next section is gecko interaction. So from my experience, I find that my geckos are far more active in live tanks. And when they lived amongst fake plants, they tended to find one spot and stay in it. Now they can tell the difference between something living and something that's fake. And I guess to them, all the fake plants just seem like lots of little plastic hides all over the place. Now a few good things though, about the fake plants is that you didn't have to worry that the gecko might break or trample them, you didn't have to worry that you might accidentally overwater them or ruin their leaves when you spray down the tank, but if you do watch my ecosystem video you'll see how much of a benefit live plants have on a gecko and also that the geckos tend to interact with them a lot. If you remember Isla used to have a Gasmania bromeliad in her tank and she used to use it as a water dish because it naturally collected water. So they really, really do interact with them a lot. Maintenance is the next section. So you may be surprised at this one, but I find once you've set up your live tank, you can just sit back and relax for a bit. I remember every time I'd clean out the artificial tanks, it would take me forever. I'd have to take everything out. I'd have to disinfect all the like hides and branches and fake plants and there was a lot of them and it took forever whereas now I have this this live tank you, if you have a cleanup crew like wood lice worms springtails there's even um I can't think of the name off the top of my head I think they're soil mites they just clean up for you and the only thing I have to do is every now and again I have to give the windows a quick wipe down a little bit of disinfectant sometimes and that tends to be it of course you have to take care of the plants you have to water the tank and occasionally you have to clip back a few plants or like remove them or add new in but for me that's just fun and the whole watering the tank that you have to do that anyway because you spray down the tank for your crested gecko for example so it really really isn't that bad live tanks are just so easy to look after and I think that's why when you see people with tons and tons of like frogs for example they go for the live tank route because I imagine they don't have to do too much work in terms of cleaning out. So the next section is a very big section now when you're buying a setup for a crested gecko it varies hugely when it comes to price people always ask me how much the setup costs I, I can't put a number on it if you're going to do a live tank, you'll need a few things. You'll need a drainage layer, some soil, and a decent light. The drainage layer, I always use hydro balls and hydro fleece. In the soil, I always use Arcadia Earth Mix, and with the light, I always use Arcadia Jungle Dawn. That can set you back a lot of money just for that setup. You might have to do your individual like looking up on these things and how much it will cost for you. I did like a quick summary and I think it came to 60 or 70 pounds depending on how much like soil or how much hydro balls you get yeah it gets pricey just to set it up with live plants I feel like a lot of the time depending on where you look you can get a decent sized plant for fairly cheap the only thing with live plants is they aren't always guaranteed to live and some of them end up dying or getting eaten by bugs or just they either don't fit, they're too big, they're too small, just something wrong with them sometimes, you know, you end up paying quite a bit for a plant and it gets chucked out because it's dead, or it ends up around the house, like my house is full of house plants that have rejected from the tank. 
So there's that. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, live tanks can get expensive. But if you are smart and you've planned out what you want and you're willing to wait for some of the plants to grow, it can be cheaper. And I have done a video where I talk through plants I recommend and plants I've had a bad experience with. So maybe that will help save you some money. With fake plants, once you've paid out a load of money for them, which you can end up paying far too much for what you get, um, at least then you're sorted and you don't have to think, oh, I have to replace that and so on. However, if we compare a few plants that I have bought in the past that I regret, uh, this Exoterra Anthrum I literally bought so there was a pop of colour because a lot of the fake plants just looked the sort of the same colour green so it looked a bit boring so I bought this and it was about seven to twelve pound actually I think it was twelve pound from Pets at Home yeah the memory has just come back twelve pound from Pets at Home then I got this live anthrum which is far bigger far prettier and it's still growing and producing flowers today and I I would say maximum that was fiver like five pound I don't think it is any more than that and when you compare the two you're like why did I pay £12 for that? There's an Exoterra gecko plant, it's literally called like a gecko plant that I bought because I thought oh they might sleep in it, they might climb in it and it's nice and tall. They, neither of my crested geckos ever used it. It was once again very expensive and they would always slip on it as well. And if you compare that to a snake plant, which they're fairly cheap I would say, the geckos use them all the time. So when you compare the two, you tend to, I feel like you get a better quality thing when you buy a live plant but I will say to you guys it's probably best if you look at your options where you would buy your plants from and so on and calculate it yourself that might be best because I can't really do it for everyone around the world but it can get pricey either way I think one thing I will say though of course is watch out where you buy the live plants from don't get them where they've been sprayed with anything like toxic and don't get them if the soil might have fertilizer in if it does you can technically remove all the soil wash all the roots and so on with water and then use a reptile safe soil um, but just be very aware of that and the last section is pests so when I had a fake tank I never really had any pests at all the only thing I can think of is there are these little bugs that live in eco earth but actually they're completely harmless and they eat gecko droppings so they aren't really a pest at all um but when I had a live tank the first thing I encountered were fungus gnats and I think they came on the polka dot plants that's the only thing I can think that I introduced that all of a sudden fungus gnats everywhere and they bred so quickly and it took forever to actually um, get rid of them. And what I used were those insect sticky strip things and eventually I wiped out all of the fungus gnats. And it sounds harsh but they are literal pests and you don't want that in your room, you don't want fungus gnats flying around. So they're annoying. Um, the other thing is spider mites. I love pileas but uh, spider mites can come in them so if you do get any new plants really check them for pests because you don't want to introduce them into your tank I know slugs can be an issue I've never had them thankfully one thing that did appear were white fly and I don't know where they came from they only attacked one particular plant I took that plant out luckily they didn't spread but I did think if they would have spread like my whole setup could have been completely ruined and the thing is you can't just go and take some sort of um, pest control thing out of any garden store that might be toxic it could be toxic to your gecko, toxic to your cleanup crew um, and toxic to other plants around you so that can make things difficult however I have seen an increase of bugs being sold that are actually predators to these pests so there is hope guys, there is hope, but pests are definitely something that tend to occur more in live tanks. So I hope this has cleared a few things up for you. On a personal note, I would probably always choose a live tank over a fake one, especially for my crested geckos. I just love watching them grow and new plants bloom and it's just, it's very rewarding to see that continue to grow in your gecko to interact with that environment but it is completely up to you and yeah i just hope this cleared things up so thanks for watching guys and goodbye